been committed in our midst, fleeced inadequate. We intend offering a substantial reward to anyone, citizen or otherwise, who shall give information bringing the murderer or murderers to justice. Hmm. Since the last. I saw him. I saw the referee ran down the other end. It must be him. Oh, did you see his face? No. Not in the dark. Like a shadow he was. He's the fourth. He's done round here. Right in the streets. Under your very noses. Edition, extra, special edition. Oh, lummy, they've seen him. They've seen the Ripper. Murder in Whitechapel. Murder. The Ripper's been seen. Murder in Murder in Whitechapel. Read about it. 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 Read about
Same way, throat cut from behind. Extraordinary. You have rooms to let. Hmm? I saw your advertisement, and the estate agents gave me this order to view. Well, you better come in. We don't really make a habit of letting rooms, you know. You know, it just so happens at the moment we might be able to accommodate someone. I'll call my wife. Ellen? Yes, darling? This gentleman's come about the, uh, advertisement. Oh, uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, the rooms are upstairs. Uh, Mr. Uh... My name is Slade. Slade? How odd. We have a Slade walk at the corner of the square here. Now, if you'll come this way. My aunt Sophie occupied this part of the house before she died. I'm sure you'd be very comfortable here. This is the bedroom. These are the only rooms you have? I'm afraid so. There are the attics, of course. Attics? M might I see them? Well, they're not very well furnished, but if you wish. <laughs> Those are old-time actresses. Quaint, aren't they? <laughs> Maid use these attics. This one is quite empty. This one was used as a kitchen. It's excellent. This is excellent, exactly what I need. You see, I'm a pathologist, a sort of medical scientist. I wanted to find a place where I could study and do a little experimental work. Oh, I'd take the other rooms as well, of course. Live in them and work up here. Would that be all right? Of course. This would be particularly useful, because occasionally I require great heat. Would there be any objection to my moving in tonight? I don't even want to go out again. I have everything that I need. We, uh, we haven't discussed terms. Anything you suggest? Well, I thought with meals and attention... Uh, Five pounds a week? Five. You've no idea how much it means to me to find just the place I need. Such a relief. And besides, you're not quite the usual landlady, are you? I think I should tell you why I want a paying guest here. My husband was a tea broker in the city, Mincing Lane. Not very long ago, he misinterpreted a commission and bought an entire shipment at the wrong price. Making good the loss has left us rather low water. So now you must let rooms. He has income from a little entailed property. 
So he still managed to keep our appearances, but he'd give anything to be in business again. Originally, my husband started business with a hundred pounds. Now, if I could get that much together again and hand it over to him, I'm sure he'd go to the city again as he did 20 years ago. Well, I understand completely. We can't go on much longer as we have been. He'll break up with nothing to do. In fact, he's had a nervous breakdown. So, if at times he seems a little eccentric or irritable or even rude towards you, I'm sure you'll understand that too and excuse it. Of course. <laughs> In a way, these dreadful Jack the Ripper murders are a godsend. He thinks and argues about them instead of moping. <laughs> This is like a refuge. Since I am going to move in now, I think I should pay you a month's rent in advance. 20 pounds. I'm afraid that my habits are irregular. I often need to be out quite late at night, but I'd use the back door into the mews so as not to disturb anyone. Just regard me as a lodger, not as a guest. Then you'll hardly know that I'm in the house. Whatever you wish. The maid will get your meals whenever you want them. You have a maid? It happens to be her night out. But I'll get you some supper. Uh, you would like some supper, I expect. Yes, I should, thank you. This is a beautiful old Bible. It is my aunt's office. You'll leave it here. If you'd like to have it. Mine, too, are the problems of life and death. Oh, it's you. I wonder why the door was open. Where have you been? Well, where have I been? Oh, I just slipped out. There's a new edition come up, you know. I heard the newsboys shouting. People are getting really alarmed. Especially women. He only does women, you know. He cuts their throat and then he uses his knife. It's terrible. They say the papers don't print all the details. And the frightening part about it is nobody knows why he does it or what he's like. By the way, did you uh, get rid of that fellow? He's taken the rooms. Well, that means there's a stranger in the house. We'll have no more privacy. He'll be no trouble. We shall hardly know that he's in the house. Well, if you really want to do it. I've done it anyway. <laughs> All right, old girl. Now I must get him some supper. What do you mean he's already moved in? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what about references? But Robert, he's a gentleman, a kind of doctor. Pathologist. He insists on paying a month in advance. And besides, I'm sure the agents would never send anyone who wasn't quite... Well, I suppose I'd better make some sort of a show of welcoming you. Tomorrow will do, darling. Good. Well, if there's anything I can do for him, I'll finish with his paper. Perhaps he might like to read the news. I've brought you some supper. May I come in? something peculiar about those pictures. I don't suppose you ever noticed it, but wherever you went in this room, the eyes of those women seemed to follow you about. That can get on one's nerves. Oh, I understand what you mean. I'll have them taken down tomorrow. And they're pictures of actresses. Why? I hope you don't really object to actresses, because there's one in the house. My niece, Kitty. And she is on the stage. She's making a name for herself in the provincial music halls. But next week she opens at the Theatre Royal Piccadilly here, talking the bill. She's brought over a dance from Paris. It's very saucy, almost as daring as the can-can. Of course, Kitty doesn't intend to stay in the music halls. Later on, she hopes to get into musical comedy. Then she'll have half the men in London at her feet. <laughs> Behold, there met him a woman subtle of heart. Oh, I don't think Kitty's especially subtle. You'll find her very clever and charming. Wait till you see her. You'll change your mind about actresses. <laughs> Four 
Wheeler's coming, sir. Here's the pass, I promise you. To tell you the truth, sir, I don't fancy walking home alone from the theatre late at night, even for Miss Kitty. Not with all the papers saying it's about time for the Ripper to do another. He's never killed anybody up this way. He can always decide to open up new ground. Oh. Come along, darling. You want to plenty of time? Oh, yes. And you've got everything? Everything's at the theatre. I'm sorry, I'm fussing. I shouldn't. Da -da -dee. You look very smart. You don't look half bad yourself, my dear. Are you ready for it? I'd better be. It's my big night. Mr. Slade, you haven't yet met my niece, Kitty Langley. How do you do? The woman's subtle of heart. Now, you must admit she really is rather charming. Oh. <laughs> Are you coming to the theater, too? I have a pass here, if you can use it. But no, I'm afraid I have work that I must do. Then you won't be into dinner, sir? No, I may be out late, quite late. Until the early hours of the morning. I warned you of my irregular habits. You have been out rather late once or twice. Didn't I hear you two nights ago? It was past one in the morning, I think. What do you do out so late? You hardly ever go out in the day, do you, sir? I enjoy the streets at night. When they're empty. You mean you just walk about? Sometimes. Sometimes I go down to the Thames. I like the river. I do, too, on a sunny day. I like it in a different way. Have you ever held your face close to the water? Let it wash against your hands as you look down into it. Deep water is dark. And restful. And full of peace. But I mustn't delay you. I hope your debut is successful. Thank you. Why don't you go out by the front door? I prefer the back door. I always use it. Good night. He's a curious fellow. A very curious fellow. Kitty, Kitty will be late. Now that you've not been able to get to Daisy, you've no excuse for missing the performance. Come around to my dressing room afterwards and I'll send you home in a cab. How's that? Oh, bless you, miss. I'll be clapping my hands off for you, miss. Thank you, Daisy. Pick it at the Royal. Right you are, sir. You fascinated him, you know. He can't take his eyes off you. I found him interesting, in a way. Well, I could do without him about the house. Something uh, a bit odd about him, don't you think? Lots of people seem odd to other people at times, dear. I thought somehow he seemed a little lost. I believe that's because he's lonely, darling. Yeah, ladies. Montague Square, ladies. Step out, please. Mind the step, dear. It's a little bit wet, you know. Look after yourself, Dow. Here you are, sir. All get in White Chapel. They'll take you, sir. There's plenty of room inside, sir. Evening Standard, Echo. Shoppers on the watch of White House. Evening Standard, Echo. Evening standard, echo. She was just a foreign and daughter. I've been guided to never. Charlie. I'm not going to have you annoying Miss Langley. Uh, five and sixteen, all right, lady. Don't I always come back when someone new is using my old dressing room? I can't let you in. Will you come round afterwards? Yeah. 
Who's Lindley? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Words going around, there'll be royalty in the house. We don't know who it is yet. Royalty? Oh, oh that's <laughs> wonderful. I must go and tell the girls. Bless you. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, Good luck Miss, you know me. I'm Annie Rowley. La Belle Anne. Now, look here, Annie. You'll have to walk. It's all right, Charlie. I know Annie. You want to see your old dressing room, don't you? Annie. You got a nice lot of flowers. More than I had when I opened, when the theatre was new. Did you have this room for long? They didn't take to me. I remember the night I looked in that mirror before I went on. I looked at myself and I wondered how I'd go over. I didn't go over. Having talent isn't enough, Annie. You've got to have luck, too. I broke my luck. I whistled to myself before I went on. Something bad always happens if you whistle in the dressing room. Oh, Annie. It's an old superstition. All right, Annie, dear. I shan't whistle. Your luck's all right. And you got real looks, too. I saw you at the Grand Theatre Woolwich a couple of months ago. They're going to love you here. I hope so. This is me. Are you going to be out front tonight, Annie? No. It'll break my heart to see you getting what I never got. Besides, a nephew of mine was married this morning and I said I'd get back to the party. Oh, I didn't come for that, miss. Take it, please. A golden sovereign. Oh, miss. <laughs> Have you heard the news? They're putting flowers in the royal box. <laughs> Why don't they the royal box? Every country has its music. Angleterre, Spain, Italy. For les chansons vraiment comic. For Delhi to gay Paris. I cannot explain the reason why these songs are popular. But you English in this season. I'll say when you hear them, say, oh, say chic, ah, say chic, on a face that's yuck, say chic, in a chanson that we can try to get what in England you call chic. Think a tin, think a tin is a typical French refrain, good enough for more is the je ne sais quoi. Loves it, tink, tink, a tink, 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 tink. Tink, 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 tink. I've just heard, sir. There's been another Ripper murder. Congratulations from all of us. Here's to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie, Betty, Jane, all of you. Coming from you, this, this means more than all the applause in the world. Excuse me, sir. There's a gentleman to see Miss Kitty. He says he's from Scotland Yard. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but it's essential that I see Miss Langley immediately. Kitty. Very lovely, if I may say so, sir. You may say so, Bates.
You're a policeman, Mr. Warwick? Inspector Warwick, please. Uh, I must apologize for this intrusion, but I came here directly from Whitechapel. You had a woman here earlier, Annie Rowley. She told some of her friends how generous you'd been, and that's what led me to you. Miss Langley, were you well acquainted with her? Not particularly. Everybody in the theater knows her. What is all this? I know. Jack the Ripper's got her. She stood right where you're standing now. Why would the Ripper want to go after anyone like her? I don't know. It's funny she should have sent this. You know, I... I almost don't like to touch it. It came just a little while ago. It's ever so pretty. That must have caused any half a sovereign to have made up. We formed a cordon and the alarm spread through the district, but we couldn't trace him. Were the mutilations repeated? Well, this is Dr. Sheridan, the theater doctor. Oh, yes. Yes, he used his knife pretty extensively. They don't call him the Ripper for nothing. My belief is that he's a man of considerable medical knowledge. Oh, I'm sure of it. It's proved with the deadly nature of his assault. In the last case, his first stroke cut the sternocleidomastoid muscle clean through. And his second stroke provided the ensiform cartilage. Does anybody know why he commits these murders? The Ripper must have a motive. But no man alive can even guess at what it might be. And the women who could know are dead. Have you discovered anything yourself? Any clues to him? One rather odd thing. Each of the murdered women was at one time or another on the stage. Why doesn't somebody shoot him? It's against the law for anyone to use firearms, even the police. And we all get so jumpy down there. We'll likely be banging away at one another. Uh, that'll do, Bates. Uh, did anybody see him this time? Some of our men thought they saw him. They couldn't describe him clearly, but... Uh, they swear that he was carrying a small black bag. It says here, the bag appeared to be made of shiny black oilcloth. That was the sort of bag that artisans used to carry their tools or their dinner, and was of a size convenient to conceal the Ripper's long knife. Well, what's the matter? Robert. Silly, isn't it? But I was thinking that Mr... Mr. Slade came here the night of the other murder, and all he had with him was a little black bag. And he took the bag with him when he went out last night. He did not. But he did, dear. His bag was not black, and he didn't have it with him last night. He did. Would you take your oath on that? You're a solemn oath in a court of law? Not only was his bag not black, but you're not even sure that he had it with him. He wasn't home till past three this morning. I heard him creeping up the stairs. Well, nasty crap up the stairs. What do you expect him to do? Dance and sing? Do you want to wake the whole house, do you? You don't even read the news. And you sit there working up the most illogical and preposterous suspicions. Good sir. Robert. Please. All right, Daisy, I'll go. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. I'm sorry to trouble you so early, but uh, it's rather important. Well, come in. But don't leave your Bobby standing on my doorstep. All right. Uh, keep moving, Bates. Very good, sir. Well, what are you doing here, Mr. Warwick? I've been reading all about myself from the gentleman with the black bag. Oh, did you know that poor woman sent me some flowers to the theater last night? Sort of a good luck horseshoe. That was my excuse for calling. <laughs> good morning, darlings. Good morning, dear. I didn't see it until after you'd left. The stage doorkeeper told the local constable about it, and he reported it to us. I want to find out what uh, florist it came from. Well, we brought the horseshoe home, if you'd like to look at it. Thank you for a lovely breakfast, Daisy. Would you like to see this down? Thank you, dear. We're trying to trace her movements after she left you. Here it is. It's roses and London pride. Here's the box it came in, sir. The name's on the lid. I must have this address. Mr. Slade. He's going out very early this morning. He's not going out. He's coming in here. I beg your pardon. Mr. Slade, I haven't even started to get your breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. I just came down to get the paper. Oh, uh, Mr. Warwick, this is Mr. Slade. How do you know? Uh, Mr. Warwick's from Scotland Yard. He's engaged on the Ripper case. My men are hanging around trying to get a look at Miss Langley. Your opening performance went well? Tremendously well. 
We had royalty there. That must have been very gratifying. When are you coming to see the show? Mr. Slade doesn't care for the theatre, dear. Oh, but why not? I must insist on you coming some evening very soon. Haven't you enough men at your feet already? I didn't intend to intrude. If I could have a paper... Oh, uh, they've uh, seen the Ripper again. I don't think you'll ever catch him. Why not? Whitechapel was swarming with police, and yet you haven't come near laying a hand on him. You don't know any more about him now than you did in the beginning. Well, we have our theories now. Theories? The favorite one is that uh, he's a maniac and kills at random. Do you think that? No, I don't. Well, he's a bit of a back alley specialist, if you ask me. He never goes off to win unless they're alone and undefended. And some of us are inclined to believe that um, he has a grudge against a particular woman, and when he finds her, then the murders will cease. Do you believe that? Hmm. What is your theory about him, then? Well, if you'd care to come to Scotland Yard sometime, I'd be very happy to explain it to you. If my ideas are right, I'll make Jack the Ripper's own fingers tie the noose that'll hang him. Well, I know what you mean by that. There's a new clue here. Ripper, man with bag wanted. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited about that. If you'll excuse me, I have some things to do. Next week, I'll show you our Black Museum. I shall be most interested. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Warwick. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Daisy, Goodbye. if that's Mr. Slade's breakfast, I'll take it off. Just come in. We've something to tell you. Mr. Slade has burnt his bag. I smell burning. I didn't say anything to you at the time. When I heard him go to his room, I went up to the attic, and this is what I found. It was in the refuse pay, Robert. He was out half last night. And then he saw this morning's headlines and burnt his bag. Very sensible of him. Why do you say that? Well, nobody can afford to earn a bag like that now. Look here. A man was mobbed in Trafalgar Square this morning. They nearly had his life just because he was carrying a small black bag. That sort of thing's going on all over London. I came straight home and I read about it because I remember that I had a small black bag of that sort. So I hid it. Anyone who even owns one is under suspicion. That's why he tried to get rid of his just as I hid mine. It's the only sensible thing to do. Frightening myself like this. Oh, you're all worked up. I'll get you a glass of sherry, old girl. Your uncle's right, of course. We really know very little about Mr. Slade. He's coming down. Good afternoon. You're going out early, Mr. Slade. Yes, I've just completed an experiment. I must test it. And where do you do that? It would be where you work, I suppose. Yes, at the University Hospital. You will excuse me, won't you? The University Hospital. It's in Gower Street. 
I wonder if you really worked there. It's near my hairdressers. And I'm going there now. Excuse me, who is it that just went in? One of the doctors, miss. I thought I recognized him. He works down in the path lab. Very pleasant gent indeed, man. Has he worked here long? Oh, quite some time now. He uh, works here off and on, if you know what I mean, miss. He ain't what I call one of our regulars. Oh, there you are, sir. The lady was just asking about you. I thought I saw you go in a moment ago. Why, Miss Langley? I had an appointment next door. You followed me. Do you expect to be followed? No. But I know that I arouse curiosity. I've become so absorbed in my work that I sometimes forget what people may think. I've been asked to move several times because I was no longer welcome. I so hoped to remain on at your house in Montague Square until my work was finished. But there's no thought of your leaving. I rather feel that your Aunt Ellen... Oh, she had too much excitement last night. These dreadful Ripper murders are playing on her imagination. I'm sure you'll find her quite normal by tea time. Then you don't feel that she wants me to go somewhere else? But of course not. We'd miss you. See you at to have a music hall there? They were going to postpone the opening. Then they decided that would look as though they were afraid of Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Mr. Slade, I, I think Kitty would like it if you overcame your prejudices and saw the show. She dances wonderfully, and Kitty really does look very beautiful. Solomon says a strange woman lieth in wait as for prey. She increaseth transgressors among men. Women of the theater, actresses, they're powdered and painted to look beautiful. I can show you something more beautiful than a beautiful woman, something much more beautiful. I had a brother, and he was a genius, and I loved him very dearly. Here's a portrait he painted of himself. Isn't that a wonderful face? Look at that remarkable brow, lofty. See the life in those eyes, they're fine and clear. There's a sensitivity about his lips. You're looking at the work of a genius. It's as real as though he were alive. I can almost hear his voice again when I look at this. Isn't that a marvelous piece of work to come from the hands of a man? A young man. It is marvelous. But how peculiar to paint so small. He must have had wonderful eyes. He had strange eyes. He was a strange man. And he died? I'm sorry. He need not have died. He need not have died. Uh, those are the death masks of various murderers, some of whom were publicly hanged outside Newgate Jail. You can see the rope marks on their necks. And uh, over there are the ropes that were actually used to hang some of these men. 
Everything here at our Black Museum has figured at some time or other in a celebrated crime. What's this shovel? Oh, that was used to uh, bury a couple of corpses in the chicken run in the Hackney Marshes murder. Oh. Um, Miss Langley. Yes, Inspector? I have a question to ask you. Only one, Inspector? Just one, for now. I have dozens to ask you. Really? For instance, what's this chopper for? Well, that was used by the Clark twins to kill Herbert Thompson in the Tufnell Park murder. Uh, Miss Langley, would you come on Friday for tea at my mother's? I'd like her to meet you. What's that cup? That belonged to Mrs. Gately. She disposed of four heavily insured husbands. With a cup? She put poison in their tea. Will you come? And what's this, Inspector? Oh, some poor chap beat his sweetheart to death with this. Why did he do it? Well, we've never known exactly, but my belief at this moment is that she failed to answer some perfectly simple question. In that case, Inspector, I'll come to tea on Friday. Thank you, Miss Langley. And um, here are the fingerprint charts. Ah, I uh, wanted to present my compliments to our distinguished visitor, Miss Langley. How do you do? This is Sir Edward Willoughby, the Commissioner of Police. Yes, I've just been to the palace about the Ripper murders. I don't think I want to go through an interview like that again. Her Majesty knows that the papers say another may be due. Have you estimated when it might occur? He says he can predict the time of each murder. There's a strange periodicity to the Ripper's crimes. Four murders, each within 10 to 12 days. Well, we know they happen regularly. It's as though the desire of the Ripper to kill surges to a peak, is satisfied, and then is quiet until the impulse returns. When do you think he'll do another? The night after tomorrow. Oh, say chic, ah, say chic, ah, it's better, sure, okay, chic. In a sunshine net, we can try to get what in England you call cheek. Tin Captain, Tin Captain is our typical French refrain. Good enough for what is a jalousie? Very good, Jenny. Here, have one on the house. Thanks, I will. Here we go. Did you see Kitty Langley often to imitate her that way? Only once. Good, ain't she? Hello, Jenny. Hello, Wiggy. You wouldn't like to lend me that concertina, would you? Why? What do you want it for? Play hymns down the Whitechapel High oh. Street. Good health, mate. Cheero. Have you given up picking pockets, Wiggy? Anta, the Ripper's brought too many of you coppers down here. I can make enough for a whole week playing hymns, and I'll bring it back in the morning. That's a promise. Well, if you want it that bad, here you are. Oh, Lord love you, Jenny. Here, outside, if you're going to play that thing, out you get. Here, I ought to be moving, too. Toodaloo. Ta-da, Jenny. Plenty of cops about tonight, ain't they? Yes, I've never seen so many. Yield not to temptation, Thanks for lending me this. I see you bring it back, that's all. I will. First thing. Good night. Good night, Wiggy.
ever seen Jerry Lightly? Oh, she's a good sort. She lent me this. She just went in. Ah, there's a smoking concert at the Red Lion next Tuesday night, you know. Maybe she could sing a few songs for them. She needs work ever so badly. Aye. I'll go right now and see her about it. Gee, up, oh, come on in. Come out after she came in? Nobody came out, sir. They must still be about. All the cordon round here. Stand men shoulder to shoulder. Don't let anyone pass. Search these buildings. don't seem to find him. I don't see how he could have got away. That's the other side of Whitechapel. The Ripper's got away. What are you doing? Burning my Ulster. 
Please don't come too near. Are those stains on it? It became contaminated in a pathological laboratory. I have to be drastic or the contamination would spread. You mean it may carry a disease? The stove in my room wasn't big enough. That's why I made the fire in here. I have to destroy this completely. I smell burning in my case. Oh, I should have closed the kitchen door then. Perhaps the odor wouldn't have spread through the house. That'll wake everyone in the house. I'm sorry. Well, it's done. There's no danger now? No. You thought about the rest to us. But what about yourself? I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes. I'll open the window and let some of the smoke out. It's almost daylight. And here's the milkman. Hello, mate. Heard about the Ripper? Yes, he was up to his old tricks again last night. They tell me they practically copped him. But he got away. What's the news, son? Boy, throw the paper down here. Thank you. I think we should go to the police. What, to scandalize the whole neighborhood? Now, we've very little to go on when you consider it calmly. But, Robert, Kitty saw the stains. But I told you what they were. Well, you get ideas out of reading the papers. Remember how excited and upset you were over that bag? Well, you were wrong, weren't you? Has it occurred to you that he might have been telling the truth? He's a medical man, and he'd know the danger if his coat was contaminated. He was protecting us. I believe you ought to be thanking him instead of suspecting him. Well, perhaps you're right. Of course I am. Now I'm going to run along and get a little more sleep. Well, I've always said he's a very eccentric fellow. Robert, I think we must make certain that Kitty's never left alone in the house with him. Just for safety's sake. Escort of mounted police. Is John arranging that? By a very funny coincidence, the squad will be going to Whitechapel for duty, and we're going that way too. <laughs> oh, I don't think I like this. Where's Daisy? She went out after giving Mr. Slate his tea. I put a note on his tray. What? It was just a reminder about the opening at the new palace tonight. Oh, no, this will never do. It looks a bit overdone. What'll I do? I'll have to have some flowers for the opening. I know a posy. How long will Daisy be? Well, she'll be rather late, I'm afraid. I'll take it. Would you, darling? Of course. Given you very good service, sir. Huh? Yes, there's a bit of a dent here. Uh. I can get that out, sir. Thank you. 
Uh, you're going to the opening with Miss Kitty tonight, I take it, sir. I wouldn't fancy going down to Whitechapel myself, sir. Oh, that's safe enough. You only have around about an hour. I'll get it up very special, sir. Thank you. Uh, good day, sir. Good day to you, sir. Yes. Robert, I didn't know you would come out. Well, I just stood round to Harris's with my hat. Where's Daisy? She's shopping. Then Kitty's in the house alone. She wanted this bouquet altered. I thought you were in the bedroom. I'm getting back. You didn't mind my sending out that little note, did you? I was glad to have it. I came down to thank you. Are you able to go to the theater? I'm not sure yet. I guarantee you the rest of the show will be good. I have some passes. I'll get you one. Won't you sit down? I expect that many men have told you that you're very beautiful. Oh, well, I don't always believe them. My brother could have captured your beauty for all time. Your brother? He was an artist, wasn't he? He was a genius. It was the beauty of women that led him to his destruction. Yours is a beauty which could destroy men. Oh, is that a compliment? Or it could destroy you. Have you ever thought of that? That's a very queer thing to say. And besides, I don't think I'm beautiful at all. I uh, take great trouble to give that impression. It is one thing if a woman is beautiful merely for herself. But when she exhibits the loveliness of her body upon the stage, as a lure, leading men on. Oh, you are prejudiced against actresses, aren't you? You wouldn't think that anyone could hate a thing and love it, too. You can't love and hate at the same time. You can. And it's a problem, then. I take my problems to the river because water is soothing when it runs dark and deep. And a man can think. The water answers problems, you know. You sound lonely. And the answer is that a man can destroy what he hates and love what he destroys. I also know that there is evil in beauty. That if the evil is cut out, Hello, Uncle. We've been having a most interesting conversation. Mr. Slade is quite a philosopher. I do hope you'll be able to come this evening. Thank you. I'll look forward to seeing you in Whitechapel. Dismount your men. Come in, my boy. We've been watching for you. Is that you, John? I shan't be long. Plenty of time. Did you remember to bring my escort? Yes, the square's full of mounted police. And in another moment, he might have had his hands on her. Did Kitty realize what was happening? Well, she didn't seem to, and we haven't told her anything. With the performance to give tonight, we didn't even want her to think there was anything wrong. It's an accumulation of little things, one on top of the other. Destroying his bag, burning his holster, staying up all hours of the night. I think this thing can be settled right away. Here's a fingerprint the Ripper left in Whitechapel and again in Mitre Square. Now, if it were possible for me to see something that Mr. Slade had held in his right hand, a glass or something of that sort. Has Daisy taken this toddy up yet? Yours has a hot drink about now. Lemon and spices, a sort of appetizer. She's preparing it now. Well, if you took it up and waited to bring the glass down. Yes. Yes? We have 
a little excitement outside. But they're waiting for Kitty. She'll be leaving in a few minutes. I'm going out too. I shan't be in for dinner tonight. Oh, do you like my new Ulster? <laughs> oh, yes. If you don't mind, I'll wait to take down the glass. If I seem a little excited tonight, you will understand why. If you've ever worked for a long time, long and dangerously, you know how it feels when you believe that in a little while... In a little while, you'll finish what you have to do. You're referring to your work? Yes. You mean you're going away? Perhaps I don't know. I rather think I may. You let me know if you were... Uh... Oh, yes. Of course I'll let you know. If I can. Use his right hand? You sure you didn't touch it? I didn't. That's fine. Nice and clear. Are you sure he used his right hand? Quite sure. Uh, turn it over, will you? about Mr. Slade anymore. These prints don't match. Then it wasn't him. It can't be. John, why must it be his right hand? Well, because this print couldn't possibly have been made by the Lipper's left hand. It couldn't, eh? Not unless every detective at the yard is wrong. I wonder if we could be. Daisy, where's everybody? That's Kitty. I've got to think this out. Uh, could you go on ahead with Kitty and we'll follow? If you don't mind staying behind for a few minutes. I'm ready, everybody. John. My men outside are going to think that you were well worth waiting for. Thank you. Mr. Slate doesn't want dinner, so you take a bus to the theater and come home in the carriage with us. Honest, ma'am. I can get a bus on the corner. Good. All ready now. We'll follow in a few minutes. Oh, well, aren't you coming with us? Uh, John and I have something we want to talk about. I'm awfully sorry, but we'll follow almost immediately. They're waiting for you. from right to left across the throat like a left-handed man. Now, we never let it come out that the Ripper was left-handed. If he were left-handed, look, stand up a minute. Then he would take his victim like this, you see, and the cut of his knife would start on this side from here. Now, turn around. If the Ripper faced his victims instead of taking them from behind, then he'd have to use his right hand to make that kind of cut, and it would be his left hand that made the prints I found. Sir? My 
just as well have used the front door instead of coming this way. I'll light you up. Are you going to the theatre, Daisy? Yes, sir. I'm just off to catch a bus. Daisy, I want you to have this. You've been very good looking after me. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks ever so. Something? I can't be sure. This part is so coarse, I can't see the ridges and characteristics clearly. Somehow I'll get clear prints of his left hand. I wonder if there's anything else here. Let's take a look at that. Locked, I suppose. Yes. Ellen spoke to me about his brother painted it. I've seen a miniature like this before. I think we have something here. Come on. Do you mind going on to Whitechapel alone? Why? I want to look in the yard. I'll follow as soon as possible. And when you get to the theatre, stay close to Kitty. I found this picture in Slade's room, Superintendent. It's of his brother. You remember the first Ripper murder? Lizzie Turner, last August. She had a sweetheart. What, the one who died of drink or something? After the murder, I found this picture in her room. Slade's brother again. I picked it up at the Black Museum on my way here. Now, that's as he used to be. And this one is the same man, also painted by himself, only he degenerated, dragged down by Lizzie and her kind. Slade killed Lizzie because she ruined his brother. But this doesn't prove that Slade is Jack the Ripper. No, but it's sufficient grounds for action. Slade is deranged. He believes he's doing right to rid the world of the kind of woman that brought his brother to this. And I'm pretty sure he's in the theatre somewhere. <laughs> Spot anyone like him? Inspector Warwick will come and identify him. I'm sure he's in the theater somewhere. Well, be quick and be quiet and report back here. Move along now. Yes. Are you tired of life? Are you bored with your wife? Is a laugh really out of the question, oui? Then I take you with me, and we go to Paris, hmm? And I think I make just one suggestion, hmm? Come and do the new Parisian trap. In Paris, they do the proper lap. You'll be shocked by such a naughty step. Much too gay and frisky, and it's risky for your reputation. It's exciting, ooh, la 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 la. I'm inviting you, la 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 la, to let me show you everything you want to know. You that, and then you this, then you steal a little kiss. Come on, who dares? Your cares will be forgotten if you want to do the Louvre.
Nobody answered in that description, sir. We drew back, sir. What's the false alarm? Anybody else report? No. Then I'd better get backstage. Her number's just ended. One more, Miss Langley. So late. Oh, never mind. I want to change and see the rest of the program. Will you wait for me? Oh, once I was single and then. Oh, once I was single and then. When I was single, me pockets to jingle. I wish I was single again. When I was single, me pockets to jingle. I wish I was single again. I said I'd be here. I promised I would be here if I could. But the others are taking me home. I'm not going home. I'm going away, and I'm going to take you with me. But... But I want to see the rest of the show, and, and I'll have to change. So if you wait outside... I shan't be very long. You're so exquisite. You're always so complimentary. More wonderful than anything I've ever known. Why don't you sit here and... We can talk while I change behind the screen. I can't lose you now. It is such lovely women as you who drag men down. We're missing the show, aren't we? After all, I... I don't really have to change. Let's watch it together. I'll be beside you. Shall we go? You know they're waiting out there to kill me. You corrupt and destroy men. As my brother was destroyed. But when the evil is cut out of a beautiful thing, then only the beauty remains. We've... We talked of this before, haven't we? Those others whom you were they beautiful? I watched you tonight. Out there. You were even more lovely than when I first saw you. When you thought I was the woman subtle of heart. Solomon warned me against such a woman. But that is the evil oh. in you. The evil, which must be cut out. But, but isn't it the life and the thing which makes it beautiful? If you take the life away, then... Then it becomes still. Then it is even more beautiful. I'll be still for you. I'll stand here quite just and let you look at me, if that's what you want. I want to make sure that you belong only to me. I love you. And I hate the evil in you. 
Love is very close to hate. Did you know that? Don't be afraid! You have no reason to be afraid of me. I have never known such beauty as yours. Nor such evil and such beauty. Men will not look at you again as they did tonight. this way. You mustn't go out into the street. What should we do? Better keep her here. Be easier to keep an eye on her. He slipped us, sir. He could still be in the building. Bates, get some men. Search those galleries. John, you take charge of the stage. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hitler? Take him alive. I know how to tackle him. Watch out for his knife. He'd cut you to pieces. down this way. He said deep water was restful and full of peace. The river drew him even in the end. The river sweeps the city clean. It carries things out to sea and they sink in deep water. If it was him, I'm glad. 